Paris One from the Mighty Boogie Down Production crew. Chilling right now with Harmony. You might have heard her on the record called Ja Rules. She sings, has her album coming out behind her. My man Kenny Parker. You might have heard of him in my philosophy. My other brother's kind of darker, blah, 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 blah. And uh, so far, it's just us three chilling here with Rao. Tell us a little bit about the new album. Well, the new album is called Ghetto Music, the blueprint of hip hop. And uh, we pretty much summed it up on, <clears throat> on the sleeve of the album, where it says, where it starts off by saying, due to the influx of platinum starved artists, we felt necessary or felt it necessary to come out with an album more close to intellectual roots than gold, platinum, Grammy, Apollo Music Awards <laughs> seminar roots. So what we attempt to do in this album is just to, uh, how would I say, bring, bring rap to its more pure or more uh, ghetto music ability. When you first got into this business, did you expect it to be what it is now? Yes. Uh, actually, it's more than what I expected business-wise, uh, the behind the scenes, I, I thought, like most of, of the, uh, the listeners, by the way, that talent ruled the industry. If your rhymes were fresh, you were going somewhere. I've then made the analysis that rhymes and music is only 5% of this industry. The other 95% is what makes you, you. And uh, that's actually what, what was the biggest enlightenment for me in this industry so far. Has that made it difficult to, was that difficult to adjust to? No, actually, I had all intentions of uh, coming out as an artist, but of course the creator worked in like crazy ways, and we were forced to come out with our own record company, um, thus putting us in the business aspect of it first. Uh, we had to form a production company in order to get paid for our production paid our little $40 and got the business certificate and formed Boogie Down Productions. And uh, we learned the business first because, um, and, and, and this goes out to every record company that's watching, we, we pretty much shopped our tape to every company that, is, that prints records out because at the time, uh, Scott LaRock was a DJ uh, uh, for Broadway Internationals back in the days. It was called Broadway RT on 145th Street and Broadway. For those that know back in the days, the Roxy and so on, Dance Interior. Uh, he used to hop, club hop and DJ for these specific clubs. So we had all the ins to like MCA, Jive, RCA, um, Aris, and so on and so on. So um, in actuality, we took our tape everywhere. We were shopping the record, Criminal Minded, not the album, just that one record, Criminal Minded, Listen to My Nine, and Elementary at the time. No one could hear it, no one could understand it, no one paid attention. So then, rather than to get discouraged, we then took our little bit of money and went and started B-Boy Records, in which they obviously got greedy and cut their own throats. And I say their own, we were partners with three other individuals who don't even exist anymore. Mm. Now, um, is that a, a, a message that maybe young people that are watching can take, like, you went and did what you wanted to do regardless? Well, actually, if, if, if you look back on history, the only way you're going to get something is if you run out and take it. Not saying run out and pick somebody up. It's not the point. The point is, is that you go out, you take with their own law. You don't go out and point the finger and say, yo, look at so-and-so, so-and-so is, is, is keeping me down, or so-and-so is, is the reason why I'm in this predicament or whatever. You can't do that. You get in, you learn the game, you play the game, you master the game. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, then you proceed and progress on. Now that's going to lead me up to your current single called Why Is That? Mm. And uh, why don't you explain a little bit about the... <coughs> message that you came across in that? Well, Why Is That was put out for a very specific reason 
to uh, ask the question, why is it that? I'm asking the question actually to the Board of Education, then my audience. Uh, the question is, is that why is it that we're learning about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and all these other people who mean absolutely nothing in black life, black music, black philosophy, so on. What we need to learn about, we're not being taught. And we're not being taught it because it's, we're still fighting a very political and religious war, which was started when Greece and Persia and Rome invaded Ethiopia and Egypt. They invaded and then cut. They, they just, instead of winning the war through arms, they looted the mystery schools and took all the books, all the culture, music, art, everything. Took it over to Greece, gave it to Aristotle, Plato, and then they called it Greek philosophy. But of course, Greek philosophy, Greeks don't have a philosophy. Greeks stole their philosophy. So the object is just to show kids nowadays that we are more than what we are being shown we are. Mm -hmm. We are actually uh, descendants of kings and queens, musicians, the originators of mathematics, astrology, the list goes on. But in the school system, we're being taught to stand in line, keep your hands folded, you eat at a certain hour, you think at a certain hour. Don't talk above the teacher. If you raise a question that's not in the criteria to school, mm -hmm. you're a bad boy. We're being taught that when it's very psychological. Why is that? Just ask that question. Why is that? It's the whole concept. Why is that? There's a, uh, a organization that you started called the Self-Destruction Movement. You were, I guess, the initial member in getting that whole thing started. Um, how do you think that has affected um, the black community across America now? Do you, have you seen the effects of it? Well, what it is is that, see, I, I, I'd like to answer that in depth, but I give away a very important secret, and the secret is, is the secret of what we're doing. Um, but what I will say is that it, it, its, its effect has made kids think for a second. I don't think it stopped the violence one bit. And actually, the record wasn't supposed to stop the violence. The record is supposed to give an alternative to the everyday music you hear. Uh, excuse me, the Stop the Violence movement was created, <clears throat> excuse me, for the media and outsiders of rap who don't understand rap, don't speak the language, and yet persist to make judgment on it. In other words, when you make judgment on something that you don't understand, you're speaking out of ignorance. So we're, we're talking to the ignorant people, the people who are ignorant of rap. We're saying that there's two spectrums to it. There is the side that you would call wilding, <laughs> stupid, or the side that you would call intelligent. They always want to see a passive black man, always. That's, that'll always get over. My record listen to my nine or bo 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 illegal business you'll never hear about or my audience knows it but the other audience will never hear about it but they'll hear about stop the violence they'll hear about self-destruction they'll hear about these records world peace oh yeah 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 that's the passive black man that's yeah I'm, i want peace and i want so and so so and so but if you notice on every one of my albums there's two sides to the coin there's world peace and there's bo 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 there's, there's, listen, there's uh, illegal business and there's stop the violence. And we do this to show that there's no difference between Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. It was the media that pit them together. They were both for the civil rights movement and they both had a big and major part in it, not just Martin Luther King. Mal if it wasn't for Malcolm X, we'd still be getting blown up in our churches, still. If it wasn't for this, picture, the by any means necessary picture, he would have probably been taken out sooner, mm. you know? Um, some of the other cuts on your album, um, tell us a little bit about those in depth, maybe a little bit about the philosophy. About that. Well, in the scheme of ghetto music, we go a couple of ways. Boogie Down Productions is a style group. Um, and when I say style group, we are the originators of styles. I like to advance rap music 
um, by not coming out with repetitious music, the same thing you hear every day. On Criminal Minded, we drop the style poetry, in which you hear a lot of MCs come out now with, uh, that's it, that's all single, no one, no that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Fine, so be it. I mean, you know, I'm not saying you're biters or anything, I'm not even on that vibe. It's just, we are a style group. The Bridge is Over is the hip hop reggae style. We come out with style. Ghetto music. We dropped a couple of styles. Um, I heard somebody say on MTV one time when they was out, a, a rock uh, a rock musician or someone asked, uh, was asked by MTV, he said, uh, what do you think about rap music? He said, oh, rap? Oh, oh rap? Well, that's, that's music for people who can't sing, so they rap. Mm. My sister Harmony, he'll take him out in a second. <laughs> second, <laughs> one, two, three. So we put various styles of music like that on the album. We have Ja Rules on the album, which the title speaks for itself, uh, which proves the singing capabilities in rap. We have World Peace, which is like part three in the Stop the Violence movement, but also it's live, all live instruments in key, something that they're trying to do. Um, you have the conventional uh, uh, rap style, Gimme That, which take rap where its styles originated from. Uh, you have Bo Bo Bo, which is the opposite of, of world peace. Uh, you have uh, a record called The Style You Haven't Done Yet, which is rap usually, and this is for producers actually, rap usually goes to a one, two, three, four beat. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, one, two. This goes, the style you haven't done yet is a three. It's like, dun, da, 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 dun, da, 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 dun, da, 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 Another style to rhyme to. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that? You know what time that is. Who protects us from you? I think that record can go out to China. Mm. That little China incident, who protects us from you, is a prime example. Although I wasn't, I mean, China didn't even happen when I wrote the record, but when it jumped off, it just, it just, right. made, you, it just made you think. Mm -hmm. Who protects us? You were put here to protect us, but who protects us from you? Mm -hmm. You know, you have people there, what, three million? I don't even know that the, the, the population in China, let's say it's three million people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's billion. Let's say three billion people. Two million of them want freedom, democracy. Eight, count them, eight individuals killed them off. Why is that? Eight, to me, that's a gang. That's a crew. That's wilding to me <laughs> <laughs> in, in comparison. That's wilding. But no, of course, that's martial law. Mm. And they sat there and was proud. Mm -hmm. We killed no one. And Ted Koppel was showing people getting ran over by tanks. <laughs> we killed no one, you know. That's who protects us from you. The rest of the album is pretty much uh, the conventional BDP stuff, you know, uh, just keeping in trend of what's going on. And that's pretty much ghetto music, the blueprint of hip hop. Is there um, one message that you can leave for the kid that's Bed-Stuy and South Bronx that's watching right now and he's listening to what you're saying, is there one message that you can leave with them? They're teaching dogs to be cats. That simply means you are acting the way you're not. We need to not get into the criteria of school, the Board of Education. We need to get into more family study a kid who will pick up a book or an encyclopedia and learn about the rest of the world will, how would I say, open his eyes to like one of the greatest, greatest things that you could ever have on earth, and that's knowledge. With knowledge, no one can stop you. Even in your death, they still have to respect you.